Hello and welcome back to LMB Gaming. So today we're going to have a look at the Dell Alienware X17 R2 and we're going to try and answer the question, is it worth buying a gaming laptop? Now I'm going to be doing this review from the other side of the world than where I'm normally at. I'm normally always in Sydney or in the Sunshine Coast in Australia. Right now I'm in Europe. So I'm going to be doing this review from here using this actual device. But before we jump in, I'd like to thank everyone who has subscribed after our last review. The support really means a lot to me. So again, thanks heaps. If you're watching this review and you haven't subscribed yet, just click the subscribe button right here and let's jump in. So the device we're going to be looking at today is a fully specced X17 R2. We're really going to be looking at, let's say, four aspects of this computer. One is the aesthetics. How does it look like? Two, the performance. Three, the thermals. And four, the fan noise. All right, with that out of the way, let's jump in. So when it comes to design and aesthetics, I think this is a very beautiful device and it really comes down to preference of what you like. All these different laptops that are out there, a lot of them have very nice designs. They all also perform very, very similar and especially you can do some tweaking with each one of them and I think they'll all be within a certain range of performance. So it really comes down to what you like, what colors do you like, do you want it to be dark, do you want it to be a lighter color, um, what kind of lighting do you like on the device. So for me, the Dell Alienware X17 really stood out in terms of its overall design and, and sleekness so i went for that um, for that laptop so in terms of design aesthetics i'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 because i think it just looks pretty awesome
Oh! So performance, so as you'll see most of the games on 4K with maxed out settings will be sitting between that 30 to 60 FPS mark right with some of the heavier games towards the 30, 40 uh, and some other games uh, towards 50 and 60 right. Forza, um, Far Cry 6 will be around that 50, 60 mark, uh, Dying Light 2 for example, Cyberpunk, very very heavy games, you'll be more sitting around that 30 to 40 FPS mark right. So very very um, suitable for 4k gaming this device if you take things down a notch to 1440p you obviously get much better performance and even better at 1080p um, so i've taken this device with a 4k 120 hertz screen uh, because i wanted to play most of my games at 120 um, and get all the bells and whistles at it so overall score for performance i'm giving this one a 9 out of 10 with only very few devices that will actually be able to beat it So thermals. Now these babies, they do get pretty hot. And I'm going to tell you that any gaming laptop is going to get pretty hot. 11 gen, Intel, 12 gen, they all get pretty hot. It's not uncommon to see 100 degrees Celsius on some of the cores, but that's really only when you're benchmarking, for example, with Cinebench for stress testing. Under regular conditions when gaming, you'll see these cores go up to maybe 70, 80 degrees Celsius, which I think is pretty fair. Um, your GPU is going to run also around this kind of 70, 75, 68, uh, depending on, on the, the load. So I think it's pretty reasonable, right, given that we are limited in how much we can cool on these laptops. So I think that thermal performance is, is good. Um, it's nothing compared to desktop computers, but you got to get used to that. It's going to get pretty hot um, and you have to be comfortable with that as well. Now, there are solutions as um, getting a cooling pad. Um, for example, that could help out a little bit, which is what I've done just because I'd like to keep it a little bit cooler, uh, but it's not something that's necessary. So it's just a fact. These uh, portables, gaming portables are going to get hot. If you're not really comfortable with that, you're better off getting a desktop where you have more options for cooling, you have water cooling and such. So given all of that, uh, that this is very common, these temperatures of what you'll see across gaming laptops, I'm going to give this for thermals um, still an 8 out of 10.
And last but not least, the fan noise. Is it really that bad? Well, it's not. Um, funnily enough, we had a, a session yesterday playing PUBG with a friend of mine who was on an Aura's laptop running a 3060 uh, graphics card. And in fact, under load at 1080p, his laptop was making more noise than the Dell Alienware. So I'd say that the noise is fairly standard, right? You have a couple of settings which we looked at on how high your fan noise is. Um, now on the max setting, it is definitely audible, but if you're using headphones, then you won't really hear anything of it. I'd say that the max setting is not really something that you're gonna have to worry very often. I think when you're doing some heavy gaming and overclocking, then that could be handy. But then if you're gaming, you're gonna have headphones on. If you're rendering or things like that, I think you can just keep it on performance mode. There's no need to go full out. That's really for kind of overclocking, stress testing and such. So I think noise is pretty acceptable. Um, now I'm used to water cooled systems. I have a desktop water cooled system back in Australia. It's obviously night and day difference. So I'm gonna give this Again, a fairly good performance in terms of what I would expect from a laptop. Um, I'm gonna give this an actual eight and a half out of 10. Now, another thing I would recommend with this kind of gaming laptop is to use throttle stop because of the thermal throttling. So what I did is I undervolted my CPU uh, and because of that, um, there is less temperature, less heat, and I can actually get higher frequencies on the CPU, giving me better performance. Now, what I did in Cinebench, for example, in uh, the R23 test, is I managed to get my scores up to between 18,000 and 18,600, give or take, when I do the benchmark after restart or not, and such. So it really helps, and it gives you a significant bump uh, as well. Plus, it allows you to overclock the graphics card a little bit more, which then gives you that better performance at 4K. So these are definitely the kind of tweaks I highly recommend to do with this kind of gaming laptop. So our final conclusion, should you buy a gaming laptop? Now, first off answer, no, you shouldn't. You should actually always try and get a desktop computer if that's possible, because you're going to get roughly about 30% more performance with the same components and you're probably going to be end up spending less money as well better performance less money but you're not mobile so you can't move around so it really depends on your use case if you're going to be using your computer mostly stationary in your office or your man cave or your geek cave then i'd say why bother don't buy a gaming laptop just buy a desktop computer you'll be much better off and you'll be saving yourself some money and it's much easier to upgrade in the future as well however if for any reason you you want to be be able to move around a bit or you do you go to LAN parties pretty often or, you, or you're traveling um sort of a bit of a you know as a nomad going around uh doing some work but you still want to want to be able to game and have access to decent performance then i'd have to say these machines are absolutely mind-blowing like the performance is really crazy that they can cram this in this kind of little device i think it's really insane um so again it comes down to your use case um, I've never had a gaming laptop before. I've always had desktop computers. Wasn't really ever convinced why I should get one. Uh, but now that I had to go for a bit longer overseas, I thought it made sense for me to, be, to buy one. And do I regret it? Not for a second. I think this machine is fantastic and a lot of other excellent laptops out there as well. So that's it. Thanks guys for watching. Again, don't forget to subscribe just right here to support the channel. It really, really helps me out. Um, and I'll see you again soon. Stay tuned. Cheers.